So the TP-Link TLWN721N USB Wi-Fi adapter is great for home use and even some gaming applications. Now I've used this adapter for past few weeks now and to be honest with you, I've had no issues at all. I've had it being used a lot for 24-7, all those kind of applications and no issues have arised using Windows 8. So we'll get on to an actual tour of the device. Starting at one end we find a USB 2 connector, at the other end we find a little keychain hooky doodad thing that I don't really recommend using because it does appear to be quite flimsy and I wouldn't really go waving this around on it but it is there so we'll give it that. Also too we find an SSO button on the side which is a very very mushy for a button it doesn't feel very nice at all to push but it is there so you know also that. We also find a clean looking black and white design with a green LED in the center to signify that it is working. So on to how this thing actually works and well it's rated on the box to 150 megabits per second which is kind of pushing it I think because really I managed to max it out at about 110 that was doing file transfers to my server and that server is connected via a gigabit network so we did give it as best opportunity we could and we managed to max it out at about 100, 110. Now in terms of web browsing stuff we couldn't actually max it out there because the connection to our house is kind of maxed out at about 20 down, 0.25 up so there's no actual speed there where we'll be bottlenecked but if you live in a country or a place or you have better internet connection where you might be getting more than 150 down this may start to bottleneck your experience. Now just for contrast we use the Surface Pro 2 for testing as I mentioned before and that has wireless AC so we went ahead and did the testing there and managed to beat this thing out with AC but that's kind of obvious because AC is a better solution. Now for drivers and software if you're running Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 you'll have no problem just chuck it in auto detect all those good things. Now if you're running Windows 7 or lower you'll need to go ahead and install the chipset drivers just don't install the bundled software because the bundled software is not really good and it just gives you information that a general user will never actually use and something an IT admin might want to use if they're going ahead and diagnosing what the problem is with the adapter so it's not really good for home users. So we'll get on to some positives and the aesthetics of this device is actually pretty nice. Now it'll go with most laptops that you plug it into being sort of a white modern design but it is very big but that's kind of a negative so we'll get to that in just a minute. It, has, it does exactly what the box says and to be honest with you I have no issues with them they kind of just do exactly what they say. Now those negatives that I did mention before number one being the size of it. It is one of the largest USB kind of devices. I own a lot bigger than any USB connector or USB devices there and also too is very thick. If you are plugging this into sort of like a stack of USB connectors on the back of a motherboard you will find your connector being bent. I personally have a bent USB 2 connector. You've probably seen it on B-roll already. It's not the nicest thing there. Also too it's quite long so if your computer's up against a wall you might need to go ahead and get a USB extender because you will be pushing this thing against the wall and might actually go ahead and snap it. The USB 2 connector does get pretty flimsy once you bend it a few times. Now I would have also liked to see an antenna connector on the back or some way to add an external antenna if you are further away from your source but it is pretty cheap so I can't expect too much from it. So overall it's a great device. You can play whatever games you want. I found no latency increase or anything like that using this device over something like a wireless AC solution or even a gigabit LAN connection. So it's pretty nice there. And overall, it's very nice. So who would this device actually be for? Well, I'm going to have to say really anyone except a content creator who's relying on a server or some sort of NAS solution where they'll be editing off-site and they need that kind of network speed for just general web browsing, gaming, all those kind of things which aren't taking advantage of fast transfer speeds over internet you won't need to worry there. Even uploading YouTube videos, I found no problem with using this there. It did get a bit hot, but overall it was very good to use there. So in all, like or dislike the video accordingly, let me know what you think of these devices. Do you think they're like the iPod and will can be completely replaced by just integrated solution in the next few years? Also too, give us a sub if you like this kind of content and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Thank you for watching.